and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about the skin barrier. So the term skin barrier gets thrown around a lot and a lot of skin companies, cosmetic companies will talk about a skin barrier trio or this is really going to help your skin barrier blah 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 but a lot of people don't actually know what the skin barrier is does why they need to protect it so that's what we're going to talk about today so we know that the skin is the largest organ of the body it has a lot of different functions it is living and breathing just like the rest of the organs within your body so it does change from year to year, season to season, day to day, uh, hormone to hormone. So it is such a complex piece of machinery that we're learning about constantly. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that people wouldn't use SPF uh, or only if they went to the beach. Whereas now SPF, you should be using, you know, two fingers worth every single day and then reapplying throughout the day as well. The skin forms three separate layers. Within those three main layers, you then have other levels and layers within them. But the main one that we talk about is the top layer, which is the epidermis. is the first layer of defense when it comes to um, microbes, chemicals, toxins. It When you look at it closely, it looks like bricks, like a house. It looks like bricks and mortar. So the cells of your skin look like the bricks and then they're kind of glued together by things called ceramides, cholesterol and fatty acids. So that's why it is so important to have uh, topical ingredients that contain fatty acids, that contain ceramides um, in order to help protect that top layer of your skin. You then have the dermis, which is um, like more of the cellular layer. So when I get a chemical peel and they, when it broke my skin barrier, if you guys remember, the 70% glycolic, they uh, completely stripped my pH. And we're going to do another video on pH because that also is so important, uh, but it needs its own video. So they completely stripped the pH. Uh, your skin likes about 5.5 and put on the chemical peel and it actually can penetrate right down to the dermal layer. Um, so it does do a, a more intense work than anything that you apply at home could do. The skin barrier is also an important organ for, and it's responsible for keeping out all of those toxins. Like I was saying, um, it protects from pollution, UV rays, dehydration, if you've ever heard of anything called epidermal water loss, um, that's why these topical ingredients that we apply or our skincare every night that we apply, it just helps uh, the skin barrier's healthy function to make sure, I talk with my hands a lot, sorry. Um, the skin barrier's healthy function to make sure that it can do its job properly. How can you damage your skin barrier? There's lots of ways you can damage it and sometimes you won't even know that it's damaged. So the environment can damage it. Pollution can damage it. Smoking can damage it. Also, if you're smoking, you'll end up with like those smoking lines as you get older, which is just like not a good look. So even when you drink a straw, try to do it from the side. Anyway, I digress. Um, sun exposure, UV rays disrupt the barrier. So always make sure that you have your SPF on. Um, hot showers. As females, we're generally guilty of having really hot showers. That also can break your skin barrier. Harsh soaps and detergents. Poor skincare. So making sure that you have a good skin regime, even if it's just those three basics. You don't need to be having a million different serums in between, a 15-step routine, even just a cleanse, um, exfoliate, moisturize. Um, so having a poor skincare routine can actually break your barrier. Over exfoliating can break your barrier and using too many AHAs and BHAs or, or um, overuse of those. So that's how I broke my barrier with the 70% glycolic, which is a BHA. 
uh, sorry, an AHA. And I, uh, yeah, I, I must have overdone it because I've been going every two weeks to get chemical peels with lactic acids and the glycolic. And I obviously overdid it and I broke my barrier. And I could tell I broke my barrier because I had sores, little sores all around. I also was very scaly, um, quite sensitive. All of a sudden I was reacting to products that I never reacted to before. And that's another way you can tell that you've broken your skin barrier. But other symptoms that will show you that you've broken your skin barrier are things like all of a sudden becoming sensitive to a product that you haven't been sensitive to before. Dehydration. So obviously having that water loss. Um, wrinkles to an extent. Obviously we get wrinkles anyway as we age. But any kind of fine wrinkles can come across with dehydration. Itchy and dry skin. Redness. Increased breakouts that you've never had before. So I had those sores. Um, I also did get little cyst type acne I guess. Uh, and they were just like little blister cyst type things. So that's all going to tell you that you have a broken skin barrier. Good skin care not only helps your skin barrier remain strong and healthy, it also helps with skin problems as you age. So some problems that can come up during pregnancy, your skin is extra sensitive. Other problems that can be can be from a broken skin barrier or a disrupted pH, which again, we'll go into a pH video at another time, psoriasis and eczema. I have eczema here that I just like can't get rid of. <laughs> so annoying. And I also get it on my eyelid as well. So how, what do we do when our skin barrier is broken? Stop everything. Stop, stop, stop. Don't exfoliate. Don't use any salicylic acids or uh, any active ingredients like that, make sure that you strip everything back. So you need to rebuild your skin barrier. And by doing that, you want ingredients that have the things or the ingredients or the compounds within the glue, the ceramides, the fatty acids, the cholesterol. So it is important to use products like this one here. So this is just hyaluronic acid and niacinamide. Niacinamide actually helps your, that was my parrot, sorry. Niacinamide actually helps your skin barrier create more ceramides. And what are ceramides? The glue that glues the bricks together, <laughs> which is your cells. So something as simple as this is actually perfect for a skin barrier. Renewal. I shouldn't have even called it a hydrate and shine. I should have called it something to do with protect because it is just hyaluronic acid and niacinamide. The two main ingredients that you need with a broken skin barrier in order to help uh, the hydration, obviously anything with a humectant. So we're looking at um, glycerin, hyaluronic acid, the niacinamide. So you want hydrating ingredients that are really going to help build up that barrier again. So things like rose hip oil, um, jojoba oil, vitamin E, they're all really, really important because they're full of fatty acids. Um, aloe vera is a good one as well. Just making sure that we're hydrating. Moisturizing obviously is really important. Um, so just think humectants and emollients. That's really what you want. So you don't want to be scrubbing at all. It can take up to six weeks to heal your skin barrier. I started feeling better within my skin at around the two week mark. All the visible signs from the outside were gone. So I went and got a 30% lactic acid chemical peel and I broke out again. And I have never reacted to the 30% lactic acid or I haven't in the past and I've had it um, even higher than that before at the 50%. Why did that happen? Because just because all the physical outward problems were gone from my skin, it's obviously still rebuilding and it's very weak. So I need to strip back again and I need to take it completely back to basics for another few weeks. Once you do that, you will start to have a stronger skin barrier. 
Again, paying attention to pH levels is important, but we're gonna, that's a whole nother video. It's so interesting with pH levels and what we put on our skin um, and how all that works, but that's a whole nother video. Anyway, the most important things is to make sure that you are having a solid skin routine. So something like these two, I wouldn't just use when my skin barrier is broken. I use this all the time because this is helping me consistently day and night to make sure that I have a strong skin barrier. And it's protecting me from all the pollutions. I obviously use SPF every day. That's going to help with aging and with my skin barrier as well. So your skin barrier is tied to so many different problems that you can have within your skin. And I think it needs to be, there needs to be more education on it so that people really understand that when they're applying products or using skincare, what they're actually doing to their skin. Where is it reaching? Is it just sitting on top of your skin? on your epidermal or is it going within the dermal layer? Can it penetrate your skin? Can it not penetrate your skin? Something like rosehip oil has small enough molecules to be able to penetrate your skin, which is why you use it before moisturizers. When you have a broken skin barrier, it is important to put something on your skin like a moisturizer that is just gonna sit on top of your skin because what that's gonna do is be like a little band-aid. But no, it's not getting into a cellular level and it's not gonna change anything structurally as soon as you take the moisturizer off it's gone, it's literally a Band-Aid. But by putting that Band-Aid on, you're obviously helping um, secure it so that underneath can do the work that it needs to do while you've got that Band-Aid on. Okay, for some reason, the end of the video just didn't film. At least I got most of it. So if you've got any questions, let me know. Please like and subscribe. It's really important that you do. It really does help me out. I hope that this has been informative some of it i go oh was there any point saying it people sh probably already know all this stuff but actually i forget that um you don't know what you don't know and hopefully this helps somebody especially it helps somebody that had a sensitive skin out of nowhere and all of a sudden thought that they're going to react to absolutely everything that's not the case sometimes sensitive skin can just come out of having a broken barrier and that's something you didn't normally react to and you start reacting to if you try it again in a couple of months you might not react to it again so it is a little bit of trial and error unfortunately with skincare but just know that just because you've reacted to something once doesn't mean that you're going to react to it again I reacted to salicylic acid. Um, if I tried that same product now, possibly I have a stronger skin barrier. Well, not right now, but when my skin barrier is good, uh, I probably won't react to it again. I mean, I don't know. We'll try. And if I do, I do. And I just won't use it again. The great thing about topical is if you do react, it doesn't look great, but you can repair. Now, what's something that you can't repair? Sun damage. So please, SPF, 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 SPF. Okay, guys, I love you so much. Like I said, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Hello. That was really.